Shalom. Call Halayun La Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachakudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Much peace and blessings to all you sense of Akim out there that's pushing this 100% truth with all sincerity, faith, and with charity. This is your brother Ash Bahakap from the Great Millstone Miami camp coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai and Lord willing to certify. All right. This is going to be a response video slash ad, you know, spiritual ad. Okay. From uh, or well, to this video that you see before you, that was put up by the Elder Kazak. Uh, the end, my friend. This is his channel. Title: If you can't think of a topic for a, a lesson. Okay, which was a edi uh, very edifying video. Okay, and, and uh, what he went into in the lesson was basically going into if you can't think of a topic for a video, one thing you can do, of course, you want to do videos, but you, you just, you just you know, because it's like that sometimes. You want to do videos, but you you can't really think of, uh, of you know, so many different topics out there. You know, like me personally, <laughs> let's say like I'm going to a restaurant and I'm looking at a menu and there's so many different, uh, you know, options. I kind of get a little, you know, bugged out a little bit because you don't know what, what to pick. It's, it's, everything looks good, you know. But basically, if you can't think, he was going into, if you can't think of a topic for a lesson, you, you could just do a response video. To, to another brother's video okay and that's the spirit because that's that's what I'm, I'm i'm doing the response to this video in particular some you know something that the uh brother said towards the end of the video okay uh going into how yahweh shai multiplied himself okay on the earth through us okay we we are uh we all have a portion of Yahweh Shai within us. Okay, so it's like Yahweh Shai is still here on earth today in, in, in a uh, sense. Okay. And I wanna add, I wanna add to that. That's a that's a great topic for, for a lesson, and I wanna add to it. Okay. And one thing I wanna say, you know, I understand totally what the brother meant by that. But if I may spiritually add. I wouldn't necessarily say that we, that Yahweh Shai multiplied himself, because from a mathematical stance, that would make us equal to Yahweh Shai. Like if you take the number five and you multiply it by five, you get 25 or five fives, okay? You would have uh, four more fives, you see, but it's all the same number. And we're not equal to Yahweh Shai. So from a mathematical sense, which this video is going to uh, involve uh, some, some basic mathematics. Okay, which math goes back to the Hebrew word amaf, which means truth. Technically, we are the quotients of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai divided himself amongst us. Okay, because we all have portions of Yahweh Shai and, and the body added together equals uh, the measure of Yahweh Shai. Okay? So, really, Yahweh Shai divided himself. We are the quotients of Yahweh Shai. And this is an example of what I'm saying, all right? They have the mathematical uh, equation right here. 20 divided by 4 equals 5. Okay? Which 20 would be what Esau calls the dividend. And 4 would be the divisor. And 5 would be the quotient. You see, so 20 divided by 4 equals 5. So in a spiritual sense, Yahweh Shai would be the dividend. Okay? Just throwing, let's just throw a, a, a variable out there, okay? Let's just say Yah. Okay? Yahweh Shai being that, that uh, dividend, 
okay and the divisor would be let's say 144,000 because Yahweh Shai, you know, just dealing with the prophets, dealing with the brothers, okay, that make up the, the governing body of, of Yahshua Allah, Yahweh Shai is div, uh, divided amongst that number. Each brother has a portion of, of the Holy Spirit, okay? The spirit of Yahweh Shai. So you would take Yahweh Shai divided by 144,000. And each one of us, Lord willing, we be of that number, speaking to the, you know, the hopeful 144,000, us brothers that's doing this work, the prophets, we would be, we would each be a quotient of Yahweh Shai. If, if, if you understand what I'm saying, okay? Now, the scriptures say we all have our own portion we all have our own measure so really it's not a, 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 a equal equal slice all right amongst the 144,000 each each brother has their own portion so really this you know what I'm saying is not truly accurate this is just an example okay and that, that will go into a higher level of mathematics that we don't have right now. You see? Because we are not, Yahweh Shai didn't divide himself into equal portions amongst the 144,000. So that's a, that would go into a higher uh, level math. Whatever Esau calls that calculus or a trigonometry or whatever. Okay? But this is just a, a, a rough example of what I'm saying to, to, to make it make sense. All right, we are the quotients of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai divided himself amongst the 144,000. All right, so I'm going to get some scriptures on that and, and uh, prove what I'm saying through, through the word. Okay, now, first off, what I want to say is looking at the word divide or division, when you really look at the word. It means to separate, okay? It means to to uh to separate to uh set apart. Okay? But looking at it spiritually, it also means to judge. All right? The word divide is synonymous with judge. And I'm going to prove that with the scriptures. Okay? This first scripture I want to bring out. This is the book of Exodus chapter 8. And this is when, uh, you know, when we was coming out of Egypt, which we're in these times right now. Okay? And the Lord was sending various plagues on Egypt. Okay? Uh, this is Exodus. Or this is going into the plague of the, of the, uh, of the flies, right? This is Exodus chapter 8, verse 22. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end that thou mayest know that I am Yahweh in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. Okay, so you see the word division, and I also want to highlight that word sever. Okay, which we understand the word sever means to cut. All right, so those three words are all synonymous division, judge, or judgment, and also uh, severing or sever or to cut, which represents a, a sword. Okay, so a sword can represent judgment and division okay because what you do with a sword you you cut you cut things in half all right and that makes me think of uh king solomon the uh the wisest judge to to live who is who is our lord and savior yahweh shai all right one of his first uh you know one of his most famous judgments was between the the, the two harlots Okay. 
they, and they, they, they both were saying the child was theirs. We know the story. And what did he say? He told he told one of his servants, "Bring me my sword." And he said, "I'm I'm I'm a, I'm a cut the baby in half. You can get one, and you'll get the other half." You see, that was a judgment. So it's all spiritual. Okay, Yahweh Shai also said that uh you know he's gonna separate the sheep from the goats. That's a judgment. All right. And I want to get this word severed, all right, in the uh, in the Hebrew. Bear with me. Okay. This is the word for sever in the Hebrew, and it says pala, palaha, palah. It says to be distinct, marked out, be separated, be distinguished. Okay. To be distinguished, that means you, you, you stand out. You're not like everybody else. And that's what the Lord was saying. He was going to make a difference. Was that word difference? That's a mathematical term. Okay. He was going to make a difference between Israel and, and uh, the Egyptians. You see? So tying it back in with the lesson. Us members of the Lord willing of the hopeful elect. We are uh, distinguished from the rest of the world. But also within the body, each brother is distinguished from the next. None of us are, are you know, on the same level. There's, there's levels to this thing. And we all have our own portion, our own measures. You see, the, the apostles and elders, they're highly distinguished from, from us young men. I'm a very young man in this truth. You see, it says to be distinct. Be separated, be distinguished, to be wonderful, to make separate, set apart. And that goes into the word holy or sanctified. All right. So going back to the scripture, I read it again, Exodus 8 and 22. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, because that's where the Israelites dwelt. OK, it was no it was no flies in, in Goshen. As opposed to the rest of Egypt, where the, where the rest of the uh, Egyptians dwelt. In which my people dwell, that no swarm of flies shall be there to the end. Thou mayest know that I am Yahweh in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. Okay, so that's just, you know, setting up the tone for this lesson. To show you and to prove, okay, that division goes hand in hand with judgment okay with separation all right i i, I spoke how you i say he was going to separate the, the sheep from the goats also he said right here okay this is the book of luke chapter 12 and verse 51 it's what the words of Yahweh shot would he not say this suppose ye that i am come to give peace on earth I tell you nay, but rather division. Okay. So Yahweh Shai came to bring division on earth. Verse 52. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Okay, and what did Yahweh Shai mean by that? Because the Most High is going to separate the one-third from the two-thirds. He's going to separate, which that's the vision right there. One-third, two-third, those that's, that's are fractions, which a fraction is division. Okay? He's going to, that's a judgment, the separating the righteous from the wicked. The Lord is going to... uh make it uh distinguished who's who worship him and, and who who doesn't okay so the the lord uh created a rift in the nation of israel okay so you got brothers in his truth that who whose families are against them because of, of what they believe and, and vice versa 
So that's that's showing you the vision right there. And I'm going to link this to what also is written or, or, or was also written in Matthew, the 10th chapter, which goes hand in hand with what we just read, but written in a different way. OK, it says Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. So Yahweh Shai ain't come to bring peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance, which variance means to sever, to cut. Set a man at variance against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So you see in this in this uh, uh, context, they use the word sword instead of division, showing you that a sword is synonymous with division. All right. And that's just something I wanted to uh, speak on before we, we actually get into the, the, the lesson. Just uh, setting the tone for this lesson. All right. Now, with that, I want to start with this uh, scripture right here. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse one. A Psalm of Asaph, the most high standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth. Among the gods. Okay, so the most high Yahweh, he's the most high God, he's the most high power. All right, God meaning power. He standeth in the congregation of the mighty, he judgeth among the gods. And when you read verse down, read down to verse six, it says, Uh, I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. You see? So we are those gods. And the most high is judging amongst us. He's dividing amongst us. He divided his son Yahweh Shai. Okay, he cut Yahweh Shai into 144,000 pieces. And each piece is not equal. Each piece is is a, a different piece, a different portion. You see, so each member of the one hundred forty-four thousand is distinct from the next. It's it's distinguished from the next. Okay. This is the book of Romans, chapter twelve and verse three. No, as a matter of fact, let me start. Let me start with this. This is the book of James. Oh, John chapter three. Then I'll get that Romans. This is John three and thirty four. For he whom the most high have sent. Talking about Yahweh Shai, the son of the most high, the chief son. OK, because we're his sons. But Yahweh Shai is the chief son, the only begotten. OK. For he whom the Most High hath sent speaketh the words of the Most High, for the Most High giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. You see, so Yahweh Shai is the totality. All right, he's the he's the totality of the Spirit. He doesn't have a portion of the Spirit like we do. He has the whole pie. He has a hundred percent. Okay, and that's why we say we have 100% truth. We all have our portions, but collectively, we have 100%, which is Yahweh Shai. All right? Let's go into this word that they have right here for measure. All right, this is the word uh, for measure. In the Greek, it says metron. Okay, that's where you get the word metric or meter. OK, and it says measure an instrument for measuring a vessel for receiving and determining the quantity of things, whether dry or liquid, a graduated staff for measuring a measuring rod. OK, which that's the spirit, because Revelation 11, OK, uh, speaks of about that the uh, measuring rod, which is the word, which Yahweh Shai is the word. OK, proverbially. 
the rule or standard of judgment. <laughs> you see? So measurements goes into judgment. Division goes into judgment. Determined extent portion measured off measure or limit. The required measure, the do fit measure. Okay? So Yahweh Shai don't have no measure. He he ain't got no limit. Okay? He's the totality. We are limited. Okay, to whatever portion the most high saw fit to give us, which that was a judgment. The scriptures say how the Lord uh you know saw you know he entrusted us with this gospel. He made a judgment. On uh, bringing each and every one of us into this truth, and also uh, a judgment uh, um, based upon how much uh, of the spirit he chose to, to give to you, and we all have our, our different measures. Okay, so going back, next scripture I want to bring out this is the book of Romans, chapter 12. And verse 3, for I say through the grace given unto me, okay, and you go into that word grace is kadis, okay, and it, and, it, and that goes into, uh, that is, uh, you can, that goes into, uh, um, the measurement, uh, 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 or the portion of the spirit, you know, that the most High uh, gave us, okay, as well, but to keep reading, it says to every man that is among you. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as the most I have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Okay, so we're not supposed to think more highly than we ought to think. I believe it's written in the book in, in the in Sirach, I forget where, but it says, Glorify thy soul. In meekness and give it honor according to the dignity thereof. So there's a balance, which is which is judgment as well. You you you're supposed to know your measure, okay? And that goes into examining thyself. And you gotta be real with yourself, okay? The, the Lord, the scriptures, you know, Yahweh Shai spoke of the parable of the talents. Some, you know, some he gave a uh, 30 fold, 60 fold, some a hundred fold. And you got to know what's your portion. You got to know what's your measure, what you're capable of. Okay. And that's that's up for you to, to, to figure out. Okay. You know yourself better than, than anybody else. Okay. Outside of the Lord himself, of course. And you got to pray to the Lord to reveal that port, your measure. And you can't exceed your measure. You can't exceed your measure. Because then you will be getting beside yourself. And at the same time, you can't uh, go beneath your measure. Because then you, you, you would uh, be bullshitting yourself. So you got to be even killing it. So you got to know your measure. The measure of faith the Lord has, has dealt unto you. And you got to move accordingly. And every man has a different portion. You see? So we are all quotients of Yahweh Shai. We are all, you know, we all have received a portion, but we all have different measures. So I hope you understand what I, when I brought up the mathematical equation, you know, 20 divided by 4 equals 5 in reference to, you know, Yahweh Shai divided amongst 144,000. That show you that we are, you know, it's not just that simple as 20 divided by 4 equals 5. All right? That's that's what I meant. Because it's not that simple. We're not equal. We He's divided himself the way he saw fit amongst the 144,000. It's not an equal, it's not an equal uh, slice. We don't all have an equal slice, so to speak. All right? Verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many 
are one body in Hamashiach and every one members of another. Okay, so we all have different uh, members. We all have different offices, just like a phys your physical body that the Most High created. Uh, as David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Okay, for in thy book was all my members written. Your body has, each part of your body has a different function. You're different, your organs, your tissues, your bones, you know, and bones, bones is, is like the most important part of your body, all right? You got the bone marrow, which that's where, you know, your blood is produced, and, and, the, and the, the scriptures say that the life is in the blood, you see? But every part of the body is, is, uh, is important and special and unique. OK. And, 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 and we all depend on one another. Esau likes to say certain parts of your body you could do without. They want to cut out your tonsils, cut out your appendix. OK. Or you could live with one kidney. Whoop -de -whoop. You ain't supposed to do that. The scriptures say make no cuttings in thy flesh. You see, and that's spiritual. Because we are the body of Yahweh Shai, right? So there shouldn't be no schisms in the body, as the scriptures say. So each part of the body is, is important. You can't cut one brother out like he's unnecessary. And the scriptures say the Most High has given, uh, I believe that's in uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Okay? It's 1 Corinthians, chapter 12. Which well, this is a beautiful chapter. This all goes into what we're going into right now. But uh, for the sake of time, you know, I can't read this whole thing. All right. First Corinthians 12 and 22. I started uh, 20. But now are they many members yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary okay so esau I'll tell you oh you don't need this you don't need that that's bullshit okay the scriptures say each member of the body is necessary man physical the physical body and the spiritual body all right verse 23 and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Okay, so that brother you think is insignificant, low, he's he's important. Every, so you no nobody in this truth, okay, no, no matter what portion the Lord has given you, he may have given you a smaller portion. That don't mean that that uh you insignificant. You had to going back to the parable of the talents, you had to you had the uh one uh dude the guy uh the Lord gave him uh uh one talent and he hid it in a napkin. He thought that that one talent was insignificant. Really, he was just wicked and slothful, like like the Lord told him. But with that one talent, you could have still flipped it into two talents. You, it's it's all about increase at the end of the day. Okay, because the Lord gave each and every one of us our own measures. We didn't choose our measure. What the Lord is looking for is increase. Did Are you increasing what you have? Okay, Jake always talking about, <laughs> he going to flip, son. Give me 200, I'll flip it in two, two bands, all right? Well, you got you to gotta flip this truth, man. You got to flip the portion of Yahweh Basham Yahweh gave you. Okay, verse 24. For our comely parts have no need, but the most I have tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. All right. So that was just a you know a little tidbit. OK, but going uh, deeper into this lesson. All right. This is uh, John chapter 1 
and verse 12, but as many as received him, talking about those of the nation of Israel that received Yahweh Shai, that believed on him, to them gave he power to become the sons of the Most High, even to them that believe on his name. Okay? So, if you believe on Yahweh Shai, we have the power to become the sons of the Most High. Even though, as an Israelite, naturally, you are a child of the Most High. But the Lord is only coming back to deliver the Israel of the Most High. You have to be born again because we fell from, from our, our godly estate. Okay? That's the redemption. All right? The parawath. Okay? The adoption. Verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the Most High. Right? We have been born again as the sons of the Most High in the spirit. Okay? To be, to be, uh, to, uh, receive salvation, first you have to be born, uh, uh, a son of the Most High by the flesh. You got to be an Israelite by the flesh through your DNA, your your seed line, and you have to uh, be born again as an Israelite in the spirit. Okay. Verse fourteen, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See, so Yahweh Shai is the Word, materialized, personified. Okay, he's a, he's the he's a a walking Bible. Okay, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. So he is the only begotten, meaning he's the only spirit that proceeded directly from the Most High. He's the only spirit that the Most High uh directly created. He is the first fruit. Then you have the 144,000, which are the, the, the first fruits after him. And they were created uh, directly for, uh, by Yahweh Shai. You see? It's like those old, um, I believe, I forget what you call them, those Russian. I like to think about this, the little, I forget what you call them, the little ceramic doll type things. Little people. And they have like the big one and he open it up. And then it's another one inside and he open it. And then it's a smaller person and he open it and open it and open it. That's, that's like the 144,000 when you look at it spiritually. Okay? Hope I'm, I'm making sense if you brothers know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, Lord, when I put it in the, in the comment section. Okay, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So there you go. He has not, the Lord did not give him the spirit by measure unto him. He was, he's full of grace and truth. He has the 100%. Okay? And we are his quotients. Can't say it enough. This is the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of the most high, they are the sons of the most high. Okay. So if the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is on you, you are the son of the most high. You cannot have the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai upon you if you are not his son. Okay. Verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. And that's the spirit, okay, that was on us before we came into this truth, naturally, okay, because we were at enmity with the Most High, we were enemies with the with the Heavenly Father, okay. We were living as Gentiles, we was living as heathen, loving the world, okay. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So that word adoption means to be to buy back. 
you know, this world, they, they, they try to corrupt that term adoption. Like you go adopt a child from the orphanage. Like that's not your child, you know? But when the Lord said he adopted us, that means, really, that means you, you are the prodigal son. We were living together in harmony as a family, but you went off. As the scriptures say, as it was your mind, it's in Baruch 4, okay? As it was your mind to go astray from the Lord, so being returned, seek him ten times more. So we have returned unto the Lord. You can't return to some place you've never been, Okay? So that so supersessionism is off. The Lord will not do a video on that. All right. But reading on verse 16, it says the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high. Because our lives, the lives of, of so-called blessed Latinos, Native Americans, especially us that have repented and turned back to the Lord. Our lives uh, coincide to what's written in the book. The, the scriptures is about us. First and foremost is about Yahweh Shai. And then it's uh, about the elect. Lord willing, we be of that number. Okay. And, and the, the, the Holy Spirit is the, is the spirit that emanates from the word of the Most High. And Yahweh Shai is the word. Okay. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Hamashiach. Okay, so we're 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 joint heirs with with Hamashiach. Yeah, going back to the law of the firstborn. Okay, when a when a, a Israelite man had children, okay, his firstborn son, which is once his firstborn son reached a certain age and became a man. I believe uh, 20, a full grown man, the, the firstborn son, he got the, the inheritance of the father. So whatever possession the father had, he, you know, he passed it down to his firstborn son. Yahweh Shai being the firstborn, the only begotten of the heavenly father. So that's why when Yahweh Shai ascended into the spiritual realm, before he ascended, okay, he told the disciples, well, all power has been given unto me on he in heaven and in earth. Okay? But Yahweh Shai being uh, 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 beautiful and, and uh, very charitable and compassionate brother, he's going to share his inheritance with, with us. Okay? With his, with his brothers, with his younger brothers. You see, that's why when Peter, okay, asked the Lord, you know, we we have forsaken all, follow thee, you know, what what, what we going to get? Roughly paraphrase, Yahweh Shai said, ye shall sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 uh, tribes of Israel. And that the 12, that's the, those that are, those, the 12, Yahweh Shai's 12 disciples, okay, which we know Judas was replaced by uh, Methotius, those 12 men. Those are the top 12 men of the 144,000. So their portion in the kingdom is going to be on, on a super high level. Whoever those, those men are. And we believe, okay, that uh, those men are apostles and, and elders coming back in, in, in uh, these times. Along with the men that taught them. King Masha, all right. Uh, high priest uh, Yaquab, high priest Arya, all right. So reading on, well, that's, well, that's, well, that's it on that. Let's keep going. Let's get some more scriptures. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse, this is all good, man. Uh. I start at one. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Right? So we have been called in this thing. We don't know if we're chosen yet. Lord willing, we are. We expect to be. Okay? If we remain diligent, that's how you make your calling and election sure, right? 
Verse 2, it said, With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. So that's the key aspect of this truth. You got to be lowly, you got to be meek. Speaking to myself first. That's an attribute that the elect will exude. Verse 3, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So you got to fight to keep the unity of the spirit. Going back to Psalms 133, how goodly and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is the, the, the 144,000 is the true unity camp. Okay, and we're united by our faith. So you can't be. Scripture say can two walk together, at least they be agreed. So I don't. I don't know what the hell they got going on with these so-called unity camps. All right. Where they bringing out different doctrines and whatnot. Okay. Verse four. There is one body and one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord. One faith. Okay. One doctrine. One baptism. One power. And father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Right. So the heavenly father is in, is in us. He dwells in us. Lord, will we be the elect? OK, we make up the tabernacle of David. OK. The house of David where the spirit of the, the most high uh, dwells. OK, Zebulon. OK, Zabalawan. Zab my dwelling okay verse 7 but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of a mashiach so every one of us have a different measure okay we are quotients of yahweh shai but we are not equal quotients okay Uh, like an example, you could you could divide 20. Okay, uh, four fives gives you 20, right? But you can have, let's say you can have uh, two fives, which is 10. Okay. And then five, five twos. Okay. And that gives you tw uh, 20. So all together, collectively, we make up the uh, Yahweh Shai, but we all are different. Verse 8, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, talking about Yahweh Shai, when he, uh, when he, uh, after he, he conquered death in the flesh, because he rose again after he died, okay, he, he died the death of a sinner. First for his own sins in his past lives and also for our sins in our past lives in this life. And, and, and you know, I can't say in the next because this is the last carnation, the, the last incarnation. But you understand my point. He died for all the sins of Israel, starting with the elect. OK, and when he ascended, because after he resurrected, the scriptures tell you he dwelt with uh, his disciples for a period of 40 days and then he ascended and then he went back to the spiritual realm. OK, and he told them, Terry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high, because when he went to the spiritual realm. That's when he unlocked the scrolls. OK, that's when he loosed the scrolls. Well, you can read about that in Revelation, the fifth chapter. Which he means he loosed this, the uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. Okay. And sent the Holy Spirit down. Okay. To his disciples. And gave every man their portion. Which is uh, the essence of this lesson. Okay. So reading it, Ephesians 4 and 8. Wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high. He held captivity captive. And how did he how did he lead captivity captive? By offering his body as a sacrifice for our sins. Because 
in the flesh, you're you're a captive of sin. You're a captive of the flesh. You're subject to vanity. This body is made and programmed to go off. But Yahweh Shai conquered sin in the flesh and died. So that's how he led captivity captive. So now we are not captive to the flesh, but we are captive to the spirit. That's why we read if as many are led by the spirit of the Most High, they are the sons of the Most High. Okay? So when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And those gifts are the spiritual gifts, the, the spiritual portions, the spiritual talents. Okay? Which that word talent, just like you say you have Jake. Well, Jake is the most talented people on the planet. When you go into that word talent, it simply means a weight, a measurement. Okay? And the elect of the nation of Israel are the most gifted and talented uh, spirits on the planet. Okay? And each one of us have our own gifts. Your, our, our own spiritual gifts. Let's uh, get a little bit on that. All right. First Corinthians, going back to first Corinthians 12, let's read a little bit of this real quick. Verse four. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Which administration goes into distribution. OK. That's that word difference again. OK. A mathematical term. Verse six. And there are diversities of operations. But it is the same power which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Meaning you got to flip what you get. Verse 8. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another faith by the same spirit. To another gifts of healing by the same spirit. And these are all different uh, gifts that each brother has you got some brothers with with multiple gifts you got some brothers with other gifts and this gift they have uh there that's their strongest gift you got certain brothers that have more faith than others certain brothers that have uh, more wisdom than others some brothers have more knowledge than others okay you got certain brothers that uh have uh less knowledge but they can apply what they know better you got certain brothers, you know, that uh have a, may have a harder time at applying, but they, they know certain things. And that's why the most I put us in, in camps and, and together. And you're supposed to, uh, you know, you're supposed to take things from brothers. You, you're supposed to look at brothers and say, man, how this brother is able to do this? He got this gift. OK, the scripture say you're supposed to covet, you know, to prophesy the certain brothers. They had they. Man, they, they know all of the, the breakdowns of the prophecies. Okay, and they 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 uh always going into the prophecies and the current events. So you're supposed to look at that brother and and uh spiritually, you know, uh I don't want to say still, <laughs> but you know, spiritually you wanna, you know, get under that brother and, and have that spirit rub off on you. OK. To another faith by the same spirit, to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. Certain brothers, they, they real good at discernment. You know, they could see somebody and immediately know what this what this person is all about. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Certain brothers speak different languages. Some brothers is better in the Hebrew. Brothers like Elder Monaghan, you know. To another, the interpretation of tongues. 
but all these work of that one and self same spirit dividing <laughs> to every man severally as he will. Okay, that that's that word. So that's the word dividing and and sever in the, in the same spirit in the same sentence. Okay. So going back to Ephesians the fourth chapter. Verse 8, I read again, wherefore he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Right. First, he died. And he was buried right in a cave. Verse 10, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Okay, so he's in the heavens now. Filling all things. Verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Okay, different offices. Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. So this work that we're doing, this ministry is the building or the edifying of the, of the church of the house of David. Okay. This spiritual temple. Okay. And, and we're building it un until it's done until it's made perfect. Okay, and it's not an overnight thing. We're, we're working on ourselves individually. Okay, and we're working on, on ourselves as a whole. Gathering the elect and edifying the elect. Because once you, as soon as you wake up, you may be sealed, but you still have to work on yourself in order to, to be profitable unto the Lord. That's why we, that's why we do these videos edifying and ex exhorting sharpening us uh, iron sharpening iron okay and that uh, Elder Kazak mentioned that in the video all right verse 13 till we all come in the unity of the faith okay so till we all come together and, and are united in, in the faith and of the knowledge of the son of the most high unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of a Mashiach you see so once the body is perfected to its highest point that's when Yahweh is going to come back because he wants to come back to a perfect and spotless bride. You see? So there, that's showing you that the once the whole church and, and the whole grows and it's perfected to to the to the right degree, then it's going to measure up to Yahweh Shai. And that's why we, we we have to flip our talents. Because once you flip the measure that the Lord gave you, guess what? It's going to give you more. Verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Right, that's having your senses exercised, knowing the difference between good and evil. You you're not fooled anymore. You're grounded and rooted in this word. You know, you know the truth. Can't nobody persuade you. Right, verse fifteen. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into Him in all things. So we're we are growing up to be like Yahweh Shai. It is not an overnight thing. In all things, 
which is the head, even Hamashiach, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So we are building each other up using the, the word and using our, the word of our testimony edifying one another building one another in, 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 in faith man that's what it's all about this is the work we are the work we are doing the work and we are the work <laughs> the elect are the work the body of a Mashiach is the work. You see? I don't have uh, too much. I may end off with this last scripture right here. It's the book of Hebrews. Chapter 2. And I'll start at. Verse 6. But one in a certain place testified. You know, it's Salakia. Salakia, Salakia. I'm going to have to start up. This is Hebrews chapter 2. I'm going to start at 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, Right, the angel means messenger. The prophets are angels. Verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Okay, the, his apostles, his disciples, which became apostles. Verse 4, the Most High also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Right. So it's according to the will of the Most High who got what portion. And it's and it's to bear witness of the Heavenly Father. So our gifts are to bear witness to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai that what he exists. Yahweh. And that he delivers Yahweh Shai. OK. Verse 5, for unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Okay, talking about the uh, the literal angels in the, in the spiritual realm. Okay, because Lord, when we of the elect, we're going to have rule and dominion in the kingdom of heaven. The scriptures say we're going to judge angels. Verse 6. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man, that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man, that thou visitest him? Okay? So a man, first and foremost, the 144,000, they are in mortal flesh, but their spirit is not equal to that of a, a mortal man. It's not equal to that of, of, an, of a... A regular Israelite or a heathen, okay? And uh, for further edification on that, let us uh, let me get this, one of my favorite scriptures, okay? It's like, yeah. This is the book of uh, James, chapter 1, verse 17, every good gift. And every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights or the father of spirits with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Right. Because the Lord is constant and he doesn't change. OK. He's faithful. Verse 18 of his own will. Begat he us with the word of truth. Right. So we were born. With, by the word of truth, which is who? Yahweh Shai. 
Lord, Lord, when we be that number, the 144,000, we were born or begotten by Yahweh Shai. Okay, of the Lord through Yahweh Shai, of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And that, that word kind, that goes into a, a, a different uh, creation, man. Just like you have different animals, you have different kinds of, of species. Well, the scriptures tells you that the 144,000, they are of a they're of a class of themselves. They're of a, their own kind. You see? So the, the order, just like you have the order of angels, you have the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the, 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 the order of the celestial beings in the heavens, you also have the order of the 144,000. They're their own special type of creation with Yahweh Shai being the head, okay? And that's going to fully manifest in the kingdom. So going back to uh, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 7, thou madest him a little lower than the angels, right? Because we were put in flesh. The angels, they don't dwell in flesh. They don't sin. They don't get sick. Okay. They don't have to uh, uh, be born of a woman and, and live and grow old and die and recycle and regenerate. No, they... They 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 dwell in the heavens. They could come down to earth, you know, whenever the Lord sees fit. Okay, they could go between the, the, the different dimensions. They have a different body and they have a different purpose. Okay. Thou crowned this him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands, right? The Lord uh created Adam to, to rule over the rest of creation. Man is the the apex of the creation of the Most High. Okay. Verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Right. Because we still suffer this flesh and, and sin. Okay. We're still subject to vanity. Verse 9. But we see Yahweh Shai, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death. Right? Yahweh Shai, he's better than the angels. He created the angels. But the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, put him in man's flesh and have him live as a man on earth so that he could uh, be tempted with sin. Okay, it's also written in Hebrews, okay, that we have not a high priest who cannot be, uh, you know, roughly paraphrased in touch with our infirmities, for he was tempted in all things like as we are, yet without sin, roughly paraphrasing. Crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of the Most High should taste death for every man. And this is the key point for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. I mean, he created everything. Yahweh spoke him into existence and he created everything else and bringing many sons unto glory. OK, <laughs> so he's he's bringing he's he's the chief son and he's bringing and helping to cultivate more sons for the heavenly father Yahweh unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Okay, verse 11, for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified. That were sanctified, meaning to make holy, to set apart, to divide, okay, to distinguish. And they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. 
saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church while I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which the Most High have given me. Okay. And that goes, uh, that's from Isaiah, the eighth chapter. Okay. As a matter of fact, we can close out with that. It is Isaiah chapter eight. And I'll start at 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. So only the disciples of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh can understand this testimony, that can understand these mysteries. To everyone else, it is sealed. Okay, verse 17. And I will wait upon Yahweh that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Okay, so the, the Heavenly Father is uh wants to be shown or uh exposed through his son Yahweh Shai. Alright, and also the men after him. Okay, that's why Yahweh Shai told Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Verse 18. Behold, I and the children whom Yahweh hath given me are for signs. And for wonders in Israel from Yahweh of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Okay. Speaking of uh, the elect of the nation of Israel, starting with the 144,000. Okay. Lord willing, we have that number. We are set up for signs and wonders in Israel. Okay. To be distinguished. To stand out. To be distinct. All right. To, to be the quotients of Yahweh Shai. All right? And with that, Lord willing, I hope this video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders a great millstone who rule well until the next lesson. Shalom.